Don't forget your bill. Well, I, I think that uh, there were a bunch of names that on the initial release are not on the current one. And uh, they could be doing this in phases, rollout. Uh, I, I think the only story that people wrote was Eric's name. But if you do an analysis of the initial and current, you'll see there are a couple of names. So I don't know what their plans are, but I, let's be clear. Uh, Biden is my guy, you know. Uh, I want Biden to be the next uh, president to uh, be, get reelected. Uh, I made that clear. And, you know, people look at the issues around asylum seekers. Listen, I don't agree with myself all the time. In those areas that I disagree, I'm going to say so. And that's the type of friend you want. You don't want a friend that's going to agree with you just to agree. You want a friend that is going to be honest and candid. And I've made it clear. No matter what committee I am on, there's only one committee that means the most to me, and that's the committee of the mayor of the city of New York. I'm going to speak on behalf of this city that I was elected to serve. And so uh, I think that, you know, I, our relationship is a good one. And I think if you ask him, he'll tell you, uh, you know, Eric is my guy. <laughs> you know, we have a good relationship. I like him, and I think he likes me also. Marcia? Mr. Mayor, um you're clearly a man who cares about the homeless. You go out and you feed them every single week. Yet, I wonder how you felt when you had to sign this executive order which changed New York City's right to shelter and whether, whether it was a difficult decision for you because you are a man of compassion, but at the same time you're pushed to the edge because the city doesn't have um, enough shelter. Like, what's going on in your head and why did you have to sign it? Mm, that's, I think that's a great point. You know what's fascinating is that uh, people who notice homeless people during a crisis, I had noticed them to prevent the crisis. Some of the loudest voices right now were MIA. When I'm in the subway system talking to people who are homeless to try to get them inside, you know, week after week after week. They're just not there. Uh, when I'm on 34th Street, not only feeding the homeless, you know, sometimes my team come and join me after our hours and then talking to those that we identify on the line who are dealing with mental health illness. We go and we talk and we interact and we tell them about the services. They're not there. When Norman Siegel put out a call for volunteers to come out uh, and help on the street, you know, they, they're not there. And so you can't all of a sudden be so vociferous when it is time to give people the services they need. You're nowhere there. And what's really uh, is notice noticeable to me, the overwhelming number of people who are living in our subway system and on the streets are black and brown. So to not be there to be preventive, it's just... I think it's hypocritical. And so this was a difficult decision for me because I'm not removed from this problem. I shared with many of you how in January and February, I went out there. I went into those camps. I went into uh, those cardboard boxes. And what I saw was, dis was, was really disheartening. And so we have to make a tough decision on how do we ensure we balance the needs of New Yorkers and not be treated the way we have. This has been almost, <laughs> uh, Commissioner Castro and I, uh, you know, traveling down to El Paso, of uh, sleeping in the Hercs, uh, going to the volunteer locations. This has been a year of my life that after I finish my mayoral duties, I go to those who are migrant seekers, Hercs, homeless, mental health. This is, this is what I do. And I don't see others doing it. And that, I think that's the question that should be asked. Those who are the loudest right now, we should ask them, 
How many times have you been in the subway system talking to people who are dealing with clear mental health illnesses? There was a picture in today's New York Post. I believe it was the post of a man standing there completely with just his shorts on. It's clear something is wrong with him. You know, I talk to those folks, you know, and I don't see everyone else doing that. And so when I'm on when I'm at the feeding line on Wednesdays at nine o'clock, the first day I was there, people thought I was just showing up for the day. And now that they see me consistently, they come and they talk to me. And they say, Mayor, you know, I'm hearing noises, I'm seeing things. I feel as though for a couple of things, because I built trust. I don't know who else is building trust. And so this was a hard decision, but it's it's the right decision that this is just wrong what is happening to New York City. It's wrong. And no one seems to care, but I care. And it was a challenging thing to do, but we're doing the right thing. No one thought about a humanitarian crisis when they first took this court case of right to shelter. No one thought, we, do you know last week we got 4,200 people? We get an average of 500 people a day. And Title 42 is not lifted. We could potentially get thousands of people a day in our city. This is just, is wrong for those who are coming here, like Commissioner Castro, and is wrong for New Yorkers who are here. I'm Mayor Adams. 